So I spent a few months building the ultimate Lego bunker. With around 20 rooms and a few thousand bricks, I'm gonna show you all of the rooms and everything going on inside. And I'll even add some lights. So join me for a look at my Lego Fallout bunker. So this is the entrance. This is where our vault dweller, our lone wanderer together with Dogmeat is out walking and he's heading back into the vault. I actually custom designed this figure by adding some custom stickers and also painting some dirt onto him. I also added this uh, Indiana Jones bag onto him but I cut off the bag part so it looks like a shoulder piece. I worked with a new road plate system for this and I think I think they actually work great because you can modify them and they have they have anti-studs underneath so you can just attach them to regular plates which is great. This blue car is from an exclusive Lego set that's only a gift with purchase and it looks like a car from the 50s 60s which matches perfectly with the Fallout aesthetic. The vault door is actually a piece from a Star Wars set. I don't know the set, but some of you guys actually knew exactly what set it was. Alright, I had to look it up. It was this one. And this is the piece that I used. Let's get back to it. I was thinking of doing a brick build door, but I think this works very good. Maybe in the future. Let's take a look at the first room. This is the main entrance, which is the room you enter when you come through the vault door. In here you will be greeted by the tests. To see if you're qualified to even be inside the vault, they will check your vitals, they will they will see so that you're a person that's fit to be inside the vault. I wanted this to really look like the Fallout entrance vault, so I took a really huge inspiration from that. And I think I nailed it pretty good. We got this blue wall with this yellow line, we got some electrical cords hanging down, there's a doctor and a nurse here, and we also have this guard guarding the elevator down into the vault. I also found this really great poster online, that's actually a Fallout poster, and I printed it out, and I put it up on the wall. I think it looks great. It's not a Lego version, but hey, it does the job. Let's move on and take a look at the surface. Up here we have this billboard that advertises the vault. We actually have some raiders trying to sneak into the vault over here. They're trying to use dynamite to blow a big hole into the elevator. I think they're gonna hurt themselves though because they are standing too close to that dynamite. This guy, he has the battle plans of the attack. I wanted to install some lights as well, so we got a light for the lantern over here and we also got a light for the headlamp on the miner's helmet. Over here we take a look at some questionable stuff because these guys are cannibals and I... yeah, enough said. I installed some lights in the fire as well and let's move on. I added this destroyed house on the top surface because I wanted it to feel like an apocalypse. This is really the apocalypse after the bombs dropped, so it should be destroyed. The original house is a Harry Potter house, the Privet Drive, Harry Potter's uh, foster home. So I wanted to include that and rebuild it a bit. It's not perfect, I want to do some more details on it, but I think it works for now. Behind this house are actually two junkies doing some jet, which is a drug from Fallout. He's also playing the banjo. I really love the clothes that I found for these figures. They're also grilling some chicken on the fire in a barrel. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Next up, let's dive into the rooms of the bunker. This is the first floor. And to start it all off, I think we should start with the living quarters, where the people sleep. Here you can get changed and get ready for your day. This guy is not feeling his day though, but he's doing it anyway. He's gotta do what he's gotta do. That's life. I'm really happy with this wardrobe. I think it looks great with the torso sticking up there because it looks like an actual wardrobe and everyone has the same colored vault suit, the blue one. Over here we just have two vault dwellers enjoying life. This little girl is painting something and this guy is trying to watch TV. I bet the reception's kind of bad though. I'm really happy with the design of this TV. It looks like an old TV, like those uh, TVs from the 30s, which is exactly what Fallout has going on for it. So that's just spot on according to me. It's a little bit off though because this guy shouldn't be having a remote because the remote wasn't invented yet. We have some nice beds here as well. If you've seen the first video of the bunker you know that, I, that I've that i redone this room a bit and I'm very happy with the outcome. This just looks better, it's a much cleaner look. Here we go, the diner. This is a diner inspired by the 50s. I really wanted to capture that 50s vibe of that classic cafe you know with the red leather chairs and the tile floor and everything like that. We even got the waitress looking like she's straight out of the 50s. Here you can take a break from everything, you can do some eating, you can do some drinking, you can take a coffee break from your difficult work, whatever you want to do. This is a place where you relax, unless you're the chef. Here as the chef you gotta work 
double hours, all the shifts, nighttime, everything. You, this is the only chef in the vault, so yeah, he's gotta work hard. Working hard or hardly working, am I right? I wanted to install some lights, so I went for the cozy but also uncomfortable bunker lights. These big bulbs that just sticks out and gives off this green glow-ish. I don't think that would be the most comfortable light to eat in, but I, I think it matches and fits the bunker vibe aesthetic. Oh, I forgot this one. This is a... This is a ceiling fan that I'm very happy with the design of, but I actually forgot to stick it in there, so let's uh, just add that. Oh my bad, there is a second chef, but she's out hunting for rats in the pantry, so let's disregard her for the minute. I think that's an arm in the freezer there, but we should not judge. These are hard times, my friend. This is a school where you learn everything you need to know about the wasteland outside. These kids are growing up inside the bunker, which is very weird, so they have to learn everything to prepare for the outside. They've got books, they've got... Uh, technology is a stretch, but they've got one computer, and it's the teachers. Uh, we got some maps on the wall so they can learn about the countries of the world. However, I don't think all of the countries are still existing because of the bombs but whatever we have our teacher here with his nice tie on he's trying to discipline the children because some of the children are not that obedient and they don't want to listen to the teacher let's take a look over here at the gym when living underground working out is a necessity I don't work out, but they sure do. Here you can do everything. You can get in shape and get ready for the wasteland. You can do some fighting, you can do some running, you can do some biking. Everything to get ready for the outside. This room is a bit dim, but I like it. It got that yellow vibe that's like a disgusting dirty gym, which it would be if it's underground. Probably stinks a lot as well. <laughs> Let's take a look at where they store their stuff. I built two storage rooms in this bunker, and this is the first one. So this is just a small storage room with a few boxes. That's it. Let's move on to the next room. Let's take the elevator down to the hospital. This is the second floor, and here we have the medical bay. Some kind of hospital where you can take care of all your medical problems. This guy is suffering from severe radiation burns, and he's turning green. So I think that he needs to amputate that arm. In here we have everything needed for the bunker to keep them healthy and alive. We have some medicine, we have some surgery equipment. I can't remember where I got this, but this is a heart monitor. It's a printed tile and I and it did fit perfect into this room. We also have this medical degree for Doctor Strange. I don't know who Doctor Strange is, but this guy's certified at least. Hopefully the doctor's good enough so that it doesn't kill his patient. Next to the med bay in the hallway we have the bathrooms. And these bathrooms are dark and scary. There's even a zombie there. <laughs> Someone didn't finish mopping up the radiation on the floor. Uh, I think he's taking a break and uh, reading the newspaper. Next to the bathrooms we have the science lab. Here they do some experiments on zombies from the wasteland. They also try to figure out some... Trying to figure out the cure to zombification. I played a lot with lights in this room and I wanted it to feel like... I really wanted it to look and feel like a science lab. The green light from the zombie tank and the blue lights from the animal tanks. I think I managed to capture that science lab look. Over here we have this guy researching and doing some science experiments on the computers. Let's look at one of my favorite rooms. This is the atrium and this is the biggest room in the bunker which can be quite comfortable for the people living there because here you can relax and just take a breather from all of the stress in the bunker life and be with your family, do some grilling, be on a picnic with your wife, or ask a pretty girl on a date. I really wanted this to be a, a bigger room, so I added another floor to it, and I actually added a balcony. I added some doors as well, so that you can go upstairs and check out the other rooms. This guy, he's a bit sus. I don't know what he's doing. I think he's infiltrating the bunker, because this is a raider in disguise, and he's... He's reading that newspaper, looking all suspicious with that fake mustache. But I think, uh, I think someone's on to him. I'm really happy with the bench design here. It, it really looks like a park bench that's made out of steel. It's not that comfortable to sit on, but it works perfect because those are the type of benches that are actually in Fallout. 
I also have this tiny little table with ketchup and mustard and I, I don't know what it is but I, I'm really happy with the design on this one. I want to hide the lights better in this room but it was very difficult. I think I need to drill a hole in, inside the lamppost to actually fit the cord inside it but I didn't do that for now. I also know that I should add small lights to the to the string of lights that's connected to the lamppost and the balcony. I really should add some actual LEDs into that so it looks better. I didn't manage to do that because that's a lot of work. Up here we have Nick Valentine who's out looking for someone. I think he's looking for a food thief. I think we can figure out who it is if we just take a look at the next room. This room is very fun because this is one of the most requested rooms from you guys. This is the overseer's office, which means he's basically the boss of the bunker. He decides who gets in, he decides where you sleep, and even what you eat. And by the looks of it, he's eating a lot of it. I really wanted to make that selfish douchebag boss, so he's eating all of the supplies from the bunker. And he even has his own butler robot, which is a Mr. Handy, having delivering food for him. So the robot is basically stealing all the bunker supplies without making the overseer feel guilty about anything. Which I, I just love this, this is his terminal. He basically keeps a nice list and a bad list, just like Santa does. So he knows who is on his nice list and who gets more food and who gets less food. So he even has security cameras all over the bunker. Underneath the overseer we have the vault security office. This is where our vault security personnel hangs out. They keep logs on everyone in the vault, they do paperwork, and they keep all of the guns safe. This is completely inspired by Fallout 4's vault security rooms. To be completely modest, well I'm not modest now, but I think I nailed it. I am very happy with these chairs that I did. They are metal folding chairs, and uh, they look pretty darn close to the ones from the game. I also have this little small desk here with a typewriter and the typewriter I did not design it myself but it looks exactly like the ones from Fallout 4 and I'm just so happy with that. I also made these metal lockers where they put their clothes and their stuff and I think they turned out great as well. If I said the atrium is my favorite room well maybe this is almost uh, above that because this one is very nice I'm very happy with this room. For the weapons locker I have a sliding door which you can open and, we, and I even installed a small red light above it. I want to install more lights in this room but that's the case for all of the rooms so I, I, I'm, I, I didn't get around installing lights everywhere but I do have a lot of lights. Anyways this room I'm just very happy with this room. Let's move on. Let's move on to some happiness. I think we need to see how these people live. We checked out the small living area, but I want to check out the bigger living area. That living area that's a bit more like luxurious and a bit more expensive for people to live at. Let's check that out. Here people dance to music, they enjoy life, and they just hide away from all of the difficult things you have to experience in the wasteland. This lady, she even has time for her cats, which she quite frankly has too many of. I wanted to make this a really cozy bit. So, so I added this really nice and comfy couch and this armchair. Unfortunately, it's occupied by cats. And I'm allergic to cats, so I would hate it in there. We also have the same nice beds that we had in the first room. These are the same design and I really like them. The nice contrast with the black and white, it combines perfectly with the dark tan. And it also matches the tan floor. Here people do a lot of different activities. These two are dancing, this guy is reading something. And she, she's taking care of the plants. Which, uh, I don't know how authentic those plants are. The plants out in the wasteland, well, they're radiated and probably dead. Maybe this is an artificial plant, or she's just watering plastic. We only have a few rooms left now, so let's take a look at the power generator. Somehow the people of this bunker get their electricity, and these are the people working hard day and night, sweating their blood and tears to give people a bathroom light while they brush their teeth. Kind of unfair if you ask me, but it's needed. And I actually think I should expand this room, but as for now, this is a good size. I also wanted to add a little light, because this is a dark and depressing workstation. I wanted that blue electricity light, just from the power generator. I, uh, I'm very happy with this room. It's a very simple build. There's some uh, cool details, but there's also just like this industrial gray look to it, which is perfect, because it's in the basement and it just looks like a place where you would generate electricity. These people are working hard and uh, 
giving the people of the bunker what they need. We've talked about power, we've talked about the overseer stealing food, but let's talk about where the food actually comes from. You can get food from the wasteland, but in this bunker they actually produce their own food. So this is the farm. Uh, it's not really a farm, but it's some kind of synthetic home inside farm. To quote Todd Howard, it just works. These people are dedicated food scientists. They're doing everything they can to regrow food inside the bunker so that the people can eat. Here I wanted something fresh and clean. If you've played Fallout 4 you know about the Institute. And this build was a bit inspired by the Institute and their plantation that they have. We have some different vegetables here. We have corn, we have carrots, we have some pineapples. I don't know how they grow them, but they do. We have a few shelves on the wall with different jars of preserves that they have stored. Maybe they pickle most of their vegetables to keep them fresh for a longer time. Here we also have a Mr. Handy. And this is a robot that serves as a uh, helper, a home companion and whatever it can be. The overseer used it as a butler, these people are using it as a farmhand. Helping out around the farm, doing some harvesting and just keeping that produce fresh. Let's take another look into the basement. The basement can be a really scary place. And it is. In this particular room, which is a cave, one radiated zombie has actually made it into the bunker and has been swimming around in radiation waste for such a long time that he started glowing. That's scary. Especially for these two children that just discovered him. This is a small room, probably one of the smallest rooms, and it's just a destroyed cave full of radiation waste. Here's another room from the basement, and this is a power armor garage, which is basically a place where you repair and fix your power armor that you've been using out in the wasteland. A power armor is just pretty much a, a walking tank, a suit that you jump into and, and it protects you from everything the wasteland throws at you. We've got a lot of details in this room, we've got some shelves over there, we got this shelf that's tilted, I'm very happy with that design. We also have this gas can which is actually pretty simple, but I really like how it turned out. Over here, this guy is doing some work on some electrical parts. I think he's working on fuses for the power boxes. This little red tool cart is actually from a Lego set. I think it's from the corner garage, and I just love the design on this. These guys are getting ready to get back out there and fight some irradiated creatures from the wasteland. This room is the most dangerous room in the whole bunker. Because here we have a Deathclaw, which is a mutated creature from the wasteland and I, I don't even know what kind of animal it is anymore. But it's dangerous and it's gonna eat everyone in the bunker. These guys are tunnel snakes, which basically is a, is a gang in the bunker who are just hanging out down in the tunnels being badass, but not really. I wanted this to be the basement part that is like abandoned. So we have a water leak, we have a closed off section, this door is out of function, you can't go in there. And even a big hole in the wall where the death claw came from. I also love this printed part, which says Gru's Lair. It's from Despicable Me. I think it fit perfect into this build. <laughs> This is our final room, and this is the second storage room. But this room is currently being raided by raiders. They're stealing all of the guns and all of the supplies from the bunker. However, they don't seem that competent, because this guy can't even handle a rat. I wanted this to match the first storage room, but I wanted it to be bigger and have a lot more variety. So I added some different size shelves, I added some different kind of boxes and stuff to the shelves that looks like... Well, it looks kind of diverse, and I'm happy with it. That's the whole bunker. Now you have finally seen every single room and we've seen the bunker put together. And I can finally rest. This has been a massive project and I've loved it. Thank you for following me on this journey. From the drawing board to the end result. This has been an insane journey and a very fun project to do. After 20 rooms and an immense struggle with the lights, we can finally say that the bunker is done. I might add some rooms in the future, but for now, we're done. See you around!